don't think anybody should ever go and shop. Oh, look. I'm freaking unbelievable. If you don't do a what is then, the what's the outcome? Then you don't have the, the right to take place in the society. We're gonna beat the legend. Here we go. Moro Islands, country 160. Can't wait to see what this country is all about. Look at the legend of this place. Oh my lord, this smells so good. Hi, this is Hamad and welcome to Final 50. I've traveled the last 50 countries on Earth. And on this journey, we're in the island nation of the Comoros Island. Incredible islands right off the coast of Madagascar and the African coast. This place is ancient, beautiful, and has so much to offer. So let's go check out what this country has on offer. All right, already hitting some trouble because here in the Comoro Islands, they speak Arabic, French, and uh, Comoran, which is really kind of Arabic and Swahili. For whatever reason, I can't flex my Arabic as much as I wanted to because not many people understand it here. So this is going to be challenging. Already I had to negotiate as hard as I could to be able to take a taxi into the city, stop by a bank, get some cash because they have no ATMs at the airport and there's, I don't even think there's an exchange office and there's no tourist office. So this is going to be very interesting. It's a wild goose chase trying to find an ATM that takes MasterCard, note to self, take a Visa deb debit card with you, and definitely take cash when you go into the crazy parts of Africa. Petra, come on baby. It's like playing the lottery. Oh, I can hear it. And cheese. Staying at the Ritaj Hotel. Turns out it's owned by Qataris. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get a car to take me to the north to see some really beautiful beaches, a lake that they say is jinxed, and see some other sites up in the north and then come back down. Or I head up into the mountain, which is meant to be an awesome cauldron up there, and do a hike, but that's gonna take like six hours. So I'm just gonna go on a walk, see what the town's about, and then head back to the hotel, and then just try to troubleshoot and figure out what I'm gonna do tomorrow. After getting my bearings in the capital, I was eager to start sightseeing. And one place I really want to see first was the local mosque, which has such a stored history. I was lucky that the overseer of the mosque opened it for me so I can explore it all to myself. And once I was in, I felt drawn to do the afternoon prayers. So the Comoros Islands are predominantly Muslim, Sunni Islam, and they've been this way for over a thousand years. In fact, people from these islands went to Mecca to try to meet with the Prophet, peace be upon him. And the country since then has been predominantly Muslim, mostly from the traders that were coming here, the merchants that would stop by these islands. And those exact merchants who are mostly Arab called these islands the Juzur al qamar which basically means the Moon Islands, right? And that Qamar became Comor and the Comor Islands, and has had so many different cultures, Arabs, Portuguese, uh, French, Indian, Malagese, and obviously African coming here and calling this the Comor Islands their home really is absolutely fascinating. Since it was the weekend, the locals were enjoying the day off by playing games, some native to the island. <laughs> while others were fishing and just lounging next to the port. Stop by what is the Office of Tourism, as you can see over there, and met a guy named Nawad. Hopefully, hopefully he's gonna be able to get us a car and take us around the north. I think I'm just gonna head north. There's a lot to see up there. And given how limited the time is, it may be the best bet to see the most and get the most out of the country. The next morning, I decided to go for a run to a fishing village just south of the hotel that had a famous palace of one of the sultanates of Comoro. It was in utter disrepair, but you can just see how fabulous it was in its golden age. All right, I'm here with Nawad. Hey, we're, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> we're in Bula Bula Market, and it is a freaking zoo. You can see they've got vegetables, they've got electronics, they've got pretty much anything you need right here in the center. Chewing tobacco. 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 This place must be ancient. Bula Bula Market in Moroni in the capital. 
Morone. I don't think anybody should ever go and shop. Oh, look, we got spices. What do we got? A what? This, this, this is curcuma. Cloves, what they're famous for, black peppers. We continued north, passing little villages and heading towards one of the more pristine, undeveloped beaches of the north coast. All right, we are in Maluja, in the north side of the island. Nawad got us coconuts, chilling on this beautiful beach, which you can see right here behind us. Absolutely serene. Nobody here, no development, just yeah, us yeah. and some coconuts. This we're going to show you is called Lake Sal, which is basically the salt lake, and it is in the north of the main island of uh, Camoro. <laughs> okay, the legend of this place. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. So the legend of this place, long time ago, a woman wanted uh, some water. She was thirst, thirsty. Well, one person woke up to give her water and when she drank it, she said to this person, when you leave this village, because no one wanted to give me water, when you leave this village, go and don't look back. And when this person looked back, the village disappeared and became this uh, salt lake. So we said that in this salt, we don't know the, the deep of this salt lake. The legend said that if you, if you throw a rock, it will never reach the ground. Right, we're gonna throw a rock and we're gonna beat the legend and you're gonna see it splash. Ready? For some reason, I was super eager to beat the legend. So I threw the rock as far as I could and bam! It hit the water. In retrospect, I think I was taking it way too seriously. The Camorra flying fox or Livingston bat you're seeing is among the largest in the world. These mega bats, which are endangered, are only found in the Camorra Islands and have a wingspan of over four feet. Oh my lord, this smells so good. This is Vanilla. This one is to cook for cook. Ooh, it smells amazing. For cooking? Yeah, for cooking. So this is Yalang Yalang. It was an export that was brought in by the French around the 1800s. This, as a flower, is then distilled and made into this beautiful fragrance, which is crazy that it is the main base fragrance for Chanel 5. And you can smell a little bit of that. Ah, oh, beautiful. I've got to find this plant. Noah took us to one of his favorite spots on the big island, the Doigt de Dragon, or the Dragon's Back. We decided to hike up and see the view from the top. And I was literally blown away. Gatekeeper. Come on, buddy. Out of my way. Chop, chop. I need to get over there. Come on. Oh, now you're squatting. That's not good. So this is called the dragon's back. Just take a look. From the head. As we started to wind down the day, Nawa told me about yet another legend of a mosque that magically appeared overnight based on the wishes of the local community. I'm telling you, Kamora just never ceases to amaze me. Come here to pray. When they, when they pray, they, they get, get you usually what they, they, what they ask for. A miracle mosque, over 400 years old. So this is the Tour de Profit, which was an area that these local locals were hiding in and the invaders were coming to find them and they kind of hid in this place and they weren't able to see them and because of that, even though they were not that concealed, they considered it to be a miracle and so you call it the whole of the Prophet. So really, a beautiful place, also 
here uh, in the northern part of the island. We ended the day indulging in a well-deserved meal of delicious local fish. Yet I shouldn't have been surprised to learn that some of the island's most famous foods are influenced by French cuisine. In fact, one of the main dishes of the country is lobster with vanilla. Yummy! The last day on the island, I wanted to do something more personal to know what by seeing parts of the capital through his own eyes. After all, he hails from a long lineage of Comorian notables that have lived on the islands for generations. And even though he resided for many years outside of Comoro in France and in China where he studied, he was always drawn to come home given how proud he was of his roots and his desire to give back to his people. So we spent a few hours that final day going down memory lane in the old town of Moroni. What is this? Charlie, this is my, my uh, grandparents' house. Really? Yeah. It became a museum? This place used to be a, a photo studio. That's where we used to, to do all the ceremonies such as the, the weddings. So tell me a little bit about the weddings. I've heard that the weddings are crazy here in the Comoro Islands with small weddings and large weddings. Tell me like a little bit more about it. There's two types of wedding. The small wedding, which is pretty religious wedding and the grand mariage, which involve all the, the city. People uh, do like build all their life around it. They, sometimes it takes even 20 years to get all the money, which can cost around 20 to 100,000 euros. Wow. Yeah. So the ceremony takes uh, a week and then there's a, another celebration where the woman bring all the gifts to the husband and we provide them, we offer them as well coffee. Okay. You can see here, this is a small coffee. Yeah. So yes. this coffee I usually takes, uh, it's cost around 300 to 600 euro. Wow. It's made by hand and uh, we write uh, Quranic phrases in it. The Grand Mariage or Anda is truly a lavish affair and a very significant cultural ceremony that marks social status in a society that is otherwise not particularly wealthy. The second celebration is that during the grand marriage and you have the third one when you invite all the people together in the to public. pray yeah to pray in the not on the mosque but on the public space it's called Majlis. from what i learned it involves intricate multi-day rituals traditional dances and opulent feasts yet i was stunned by how critical it was for social mobility and leadership within the community if you don't do a grand mariage then what is then, the what's the outcome then you don't have uh, the first the pride then you don't have the the right to take place in the society uh, Wow. Like in front of the tables, you know? Uh, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> it's so, good, it's good, it's beautiful to live. Actually, it's something that uh, everyone should experience here. Yeah. And I'm waiting yeah. to come back. When this guy gets married, I'll be part of that grand mariage. Yeah. You go crazy this on that day, fourth yeah. day. <laughs> Gazing over the humble capital of Moroni, I could not help but think of how many ships had passed through that port, how many calls to prayer had summoned the local worshippers, how many people from all walks of life walked down those streets for hundreds of years. I admit, I did not know much about these islands before I visited, except that they were oddly enough part of the Arab League. But in just a few days, I truly embraced the history and cultural traditions, the nature and the food of the country, and of course, not surprisingly, the warmth and joy of the people that made me feel like I was one of their own. I know I will return to explore the other sister islands and hopefully experience the Grand Mariage in person. Here in Comoros, what I love the most is I cannot spend a day without laughing or smiling because people are so genuine, so so funny. And uh, actually, typically the, the Sundays morning, I go to the small forest where I have a field and I grab fruits to vitalize the, the new week. So if I if I can say something about Comoros, is a genuine country in terms of nature, in terms of culture, in terms of uh, well-being. When you come in Comoros, you make a, a trip to to a past, to the history, and also, and most important, to yourself, because you can resource uh, yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of the incredible Comoro Island. Absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at the background. Have you ever been to the Comoro Islands? Have you ever seen these places? Please comment below and let me know about your experience. If I ever come back, and I think I will, I want to learn more about how to maximize my time in this incredible place. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Stay curious, and I look forward to seeing you on my next journey.